SCP-973. I've only heard crazy things about it, so let's check it out. A group of friends are driving down the highway late at night. Oh boy. They're on their way home from a concert, and after the long night of dancing and partying, all of them are feeling quite tired. The radio is turned off, and after so much loud music, the silence is refreshing. Mm. No one is talking at all, and in fact, the driver notices that both his girlfriend sitting next to him, as well as his friend in the back seat, have fallen asleep. The driver tries to make sure that he doesn't do the same as the car moves down the long stretch oh of straight, empty highway. They say that driving tired is as bad as driving drunk. Just saying. The driver's eyes start to grow heavy. Oh, here now. he goes. Oh, no. He can feel the weight of sleep oh, starting no. to press Wake up! He turns the radio on oh, yeah, at a low blast volume. Music. But that only staves off the drowsiness for a moment. I will say that does help. I'm going to be honest. I used to have a car that had a huge like subwoofer in the back so that whenever I would play music loud, it would go ba-boom, ba-boom. And uh, one time I drove home really late, maybe tired. I, I'm not going to admit it, but you know what I'm saying? And I just blasted music the whole way home, and that helped a lot. He can't fight the approach of sleep any longer, and his eyes start to close. Oh, no. As he oh, no, to sleep, oh, no. His foot presses down slightly more GG's on the accelerator. Body. The driver's GG's head soldier. comes to the side as the car gains speed and begins to pull to the right of where it crosses the white line, marking the edge of the highway. The tires oh dip off the road oh gosh. into the wake dirt, up, please, and the sudden wake change up. causes the driver oh, to cool. jerk back awake. He quickly swerves the car back onto the road. The sudden oh, jerk good. causes both the passengers to wake up. Oh, he's good. Okay? Oh, what is up with the dude in the back's nostrils, by the way? He doesn't have, like, the middle part, like this part. That is creepy. Is he the SCP? Who is the SCP? It's got to be that thing. That is gross. If any of you guys out there are missing your middle part of your nose for some reason, you're beautiful. I feel like I got to say that. Okay. The driver tells them that he just swerved to, to avoid an animal in the road. That's right. Nothing to be worried about. Right, they can right. go back to sleep. As both of his friends close their eyes and try to go Classic. back to sleep. The driver spots something. Lights have appeared in his rearview mirror. It's a uh -oh. pair of headlights. Uh -oh. He didn't notice a car pulling out or speeding up behind him, but he must have missed it when he was dozing off. His heart is still racing from when he drifted off the road, and he's trying to regain his composure. That would be really scary. It's about to get scary. a whole lot harder, because when he looks in the mirror again, he sees that the telltale red oh, and blue no! lights of the police cruiser have lit up behind him. It's the popos, guys! If you ever get pulled over, do do not ever try to escape. Just pull over. Just pull over. Just pull over. If he tries to escape, he's a big fat dummy. Oh crap! Oh no! Oh no! The driver says out loud. Everyone is awake now and aware of the cop behind them. They grow nervous and start freaking out. Not all the activities they had partaken in at the concert were, strictly speaking, technically legal in this state. Ooh. What do we do? The driver Okay, asks. that's actually, that's bad. Got to pull over, says his girlfriend. Rough situation. The cop car's sirens come on. This is serious. But then something strange happens. They hear a voice in the car, coming over the radio. It's too quiet to hear, but when the driver turns up the volume, the message comes through loud and clear. Pull over! It's a gruff voice that keeps repeating the same phrase over and over. You better run. How is this- Wait, you better run? If that- Okay, I'm assuming that's the SCP that has, like, hijacked the- the radio. But why would he tell him to run? Like, doesn't he want him to pull over? Or maybe that's all part of it. Maybe the SCP is, like, the cop car, and it loves chasing humans. Message coming over the radio. They don't know, but the passenger in the back seat agrees with the voice. They've got to try and run. They what? have to get out of here. The driver's girlfriend is screaming to pull over. I would scream the cop car speeds up. I might jump out of that car. Now, almost on their bumper. Be like, heck no, I'm not a part of this. Blaring. Uh -huh. The driver doesn't know what to do. Should he pull over? Should he try to run? Everyone is yelling. He starts to push down on the accelerator. Oh, you but then dummy. thinks better of it. There's no way this old car can outrun a cop. Finally, he makes the decision to brake oh. and starts to pull oh, the car off the over. side of the road. boy. The police car comes to a stop behind them. The sirens are off. But the bright lights are almost blinding. They sit in the car and await their fate. But nothing happens. The car is just sitting there behind them. After what feels like a long while, the door of the cop car finally opens. The three passengers watch silently as a highway patrol officer steps out and begins approaching their car. The driver tells everyone to relax. Hands up! It's going to be just fine. But the passenger in the back starts to panic 
<laughs> he can't okay. get arrested. If he does, it will mean that he loses his scholarship. He'll get kicked out of school. His whole life will be over. Everyone has one friend that's like that, bro. I feel like everyone's got one friend that when you go out in public, if anything happens, they just start freaking out. They start screaming. They start panicking. They don't know what to do. They start crying, whatever. That's not me. That's, that's, that's not, I don't, that's not me. I'm totally like 100% sick and cool all the time. I never panic or get nervous. Never. That's not me. The highway patrol officer reaches the car. Despite it being late at night, Dang, he's, he's wearing dark aviator sunglasses that cover half of his face. They should rename, if that's the SCP, which I'm assuming it is, they should just rename them to uh, SCP uh, EGG Egg. SCP Egghead. He stands in front of the door to the car and waits. The driver, feeling nervous and afraid, rolls down his window. This is what I would say. Hello, officer. How may I assist you today? Was I speeding? That's what you do. The police officer doesn't move or react, though. He just keeps standing okay, that's next creepy. to the car. Um, H hello? Good evening, officer, the driver says. That's, a, that's no actually response. a good thing to say. The driver turns and looks at his girlfriend in the front seat, but all she can do is shrug. He turns back to the highway patrolman. Did we do something wrong? There's another long pause, but then the patrolman finally reacts. He bends over and leans in close, hey, yo. sticking his head practically through the open window hey, yo. and putting his tight-lipped face right hey, next yo. to the driver's. Give him a pack! Give, give him what he wants! Do whatever he says! Give him a little mwah! And then get out of there! That's what I would do. Where do you, is this going? Do you want my license and registration? The driver asks. The patrolman doesn't respond. He reaches up <laughs> Why and slowly is he just grabs the side of his like dark aviator him? sunglasses. He pulls them down, and the driver finds himself staring into a <laughs> pair of bright, red, glowing eyes. Evil eyes. Everyone in the car starts to scream as the thing standing in front of them opens its own mouth to reveal a big, black, Ew! gaping hole with no gums or teeth, a horrifying void in its face that screams Drive! Right at them. As you drive away, you dummy! If that dude, if it got him and they didn't drive away, they are dumb, bro. Come on, just go. Have already deduced, this was no normal traffic stop, and certainly not a normal highway patrol officer. No, the entity that this group of young adults encountered that evening was one that dozens before them had the same misfortune of running into, oh, and one go. that the SCP Foundation is actively trying to stop from engaging in its frightening and dangerous behavior. This is SCP-973. So it's like, it seems to be like a super powerful SCP that just loves cosplaying as a police officer. I don't, I don't get it. Like SCPs generally are insanely strong and can do a lot, like whatever they want really. And this one enjoys pretending to be a police officer, I guess. I, I, I don't know. SCP-973 is not one, but actually two separate entities. Oh. The first, designated SCP-973-1, is a police cruiser that appears to be a model similar to those used by actual state troopers during the early 1970s. So the car itself is also an SCP. That's interesting. So one SCP is just lives inside the other SCP at all times. I guess they're just like best friends or something. Is much like you would expect for a well-used, nearly 50-year-old vehicle, with much of it being in an advanced state of disrepair. Eyewitness accounts of SCP-973-1 have described the police car as having numerous dents on the doors and hood, cracks in the windshield, multiple rust spots, and a rear bumper that looks to be held on with duct tape. The vehicle's driver and sole occupant has been designated SCP-973-2. This humanoid figure has an appearance that resembles a Caucasian male in his late 40s. I feel like that's what I'm going to look like in about 22 and a half years, except with a red mustache. It is dressed in the state trooper uniform that, like 973-1, also looks to have come from the early 1970s. It's definitely what I'm going to look like. And eyewitnesses have described him as being slightly overweight, balding, hey, and sporting hey, a handlebar now, come mustache. On. Come on, that is elite male physique right there. Both Let the anomalous be. car and its driver will appear at night in a specific location along a particular U.S. highway. It is unknown exactly what will cause SCP-973 to show up on this road, but Foundation researchers have hypothesized that its manifestation may be triggered when a vehicle accelerates over a certain speed. You may think you're safe, then, if you stay below a certain speed, but unfortunately, you'd be wrong. Hmm. It's unknown exactly what speed limit infraction will lead to SCP-973's appearance, with reports ranging from 35 miles per hour all the way to 70. But when it does occur, the driver will find that they are now a target. SCP-973 will materialize roughly half a kilometer behind the targeted vehicle and will approach them at a high rate of speed. 
SCP-973-1 sirens will turn on and its lights will flash, as it also somehow broadcasts a message into the targeted car that is picked up on the car's radio, a message that urges the driver to run, often accompanied by several expletives. In most cases, the targeted vehicle will abide by the instructions over the radio and begin to flee, though it's unlikely that That's this so is due dumb. to any mimetic effect. Rather, it would seem that most run out of pure terror. So, like, I don't understand why they don't just shut down the highway and be like, actually, no one's allowed to drive here anymore because people keep dying. Hello? Why is that so, like, why, why, why would no one think of that idea? SCP-973 will then pursue the targeted car, leading to a high-speed chase. No matter how fast the targeted car is, though, the SCP-973-1 police cruiser will always be faster. <sighs> and it typically takes no more than six minutes for them to be overtaken. SCP-973 seems to have no qualms about ramming into the fleeing car, which likely <laughs> accounts for the extreme damage present on the patrol car. While it is unclear exactly what happens once 973 forces the targeted vehicle to stop, it's also unclear what this man's face looks like, and I'm extraordinarily curious. Either through their own choice or by being rammed off the road, the results are quite disturbing. The vehicle that fled will later be located somewhere near SCP 973's spawning location. That looks like a Honda Civic. Maybe, maybe, maybe the SCP just has something out against a specific like car bound. He's like, oh, another Honda. Go get him. Usually within roughly six kilometers of the road. Whether the vehicles that are found that far from the road drove there in a panic or were somehow transported there by anomalous means Whoa. isn't clear. What is clear is that the occupants of the cars met a truly grisly fate. Their bodies will show signs oh! of extreme violence and assault, including evisceration. Oh! And some have been so badly named and mangled that visual identification was impossible. The oh, vehicles themselves the back are destroyed. badly damaged, showing signs of impact from another vehicle. Wait, bro, he doesn't even eat them. He just he just destroys them. He just shreds them up and then doesn't even eat them. Like, what's the point? I don't know. I guess he is truly doing it for fun. And severe burn damage is often present in burn? the interior. Burns? So far. Over 34 individuals and 19 vehicles have been designated as victims of SCP-973. <laughs> Why are they designating vehicles as victims? Oh, those poor vehicles. Oh, poor vehicles getting destroyed. No, it's the people that are the victims, dummy. Though it is likely that the true number is much, much higher. Okay, that's scary. Perhaps like most that. terrifying of all is that some of the victims survived. The Foundation has Why recovered five individuals from sites of SCP-973 attacks, who, in addition to their gruesome physical injuries, also suffer from varying levels of ongoing mental trauma. But oh, why gosh. not just destroy the road that SCP-973 appears on? Yeah, blow it up! Good idea! Well, the Foundation had this same idea, and in 1983, the section of highway affected by SCP-973 was demolished. Okay, so this has been going on for 40 years now. 40 years this dude has been just chilling and pulling cars over and killing the people inside. In an attempt to stop it from manifesting. This attempt failed, though. All this led to was SCP-973 changing its location, where it immediately began engaging oh, in geez. the same deadly okay. behavior. So I guess closing the road doesn't help either, then. Numerous attempts have also been made to try and capture both 973-1 and dash 2. In one such event, several teams of SCP Foundation containment specialists were dispatched to its section of highway with the mission to subdue and contain the anomaly. Okay. After multiple that, attempts to get SCP-973 to appear by driving down the highway at various speeds, a car carrying several agents was finally successful, and they spotted the flashing red and blue lights of 973-1 okay, okay. behind them as the message it's telling working? them to run began playing over the radio. With no further warnings, the anomalous police car closed in on them, even faster than the agents were expecting. You better call him back began up! began ramming into their car. A van filled oh, with yes. additional containment specialists oh, let's go. was They're dispatched gonna do it. to the area to help. And when they reached the area that the GPS tracker on the pursued car led them to, they found that they were too late. What? SCP-973 had pushed the agent's car far off oh. the road and was ruthlessly tearing their bodies apart. These are supposed to be like SCP trained people ready for this. They did exactly what they wanted to do and then they still got wrecked by this guy. That's crazy. The arriving containment team immediately began firing on 973 in an attempt to save their fellow Foundation agents. The team's weapons appeared to cause some no. injuries to 973-2, showing that it is perhaps vulnerable to lasting damage, just oh, like geez. the 973-1 vehicle I don't is. think it's enough, though. In a post-mission interview, one of the agents described SCP-973's new appearance. His eyes were red, and his mouth, it was just a hole. No teeth, no tongue, just a hole. 
No other reports would Probably come from this incident, when he saw though, that. as this agent was the only survivor. I don't get it. How are they not more prepared? How are the, like, guns the only thing that they bring? Because they should know at this point that there's so many SCPs that are pretty much immune to those types of weapons. You gotta trap them, or bring a tank, or bring a bazooka. Like, come on! How are we not learning these things yet? SCP-973 killed the other nine agents and fled the scene. While it is believed that the Foundation team was able to wound the anomalous creature, it was neither contained nor incapacitated oh in gosh, any real sense. No. And the next report of a 973 incident occurred just nine days later. SCP-973's ability to seemingly appear at a new location and the difficulty it has shown oh, in being contained spawns. has it gotten it a well-earned Euclid classification. The roughly 60 kilometers of highway on which it is known to appear is under satellite surveillance at all times, and all traffic between 10 p.m. and 4.30 a.m. is diverted oh, along a non-highway detour route. Oh, there force, you go! That's, a, that's what I was talking about! Just Unfortunately for the SCP Foundation and the general highway-using populace, these security protocols have necessitated frequent updates. Because while the area that SCP-973 engages in its predatory behavior on is well known, both the time of day during which it will appear and the area it seems to affect are expanding. Do you guys remember the Magic School Bus from like elementary school? But did you know the Magic School Bus has gone rogue? It used to be an awesome majestical creature, but it is now an SCP. It is called the Man Eating School Bus. A young woman on her way home is walking down a city street. And just like most nights, the downtown empties out after the working day ends leaving the streets empty of both cars and pedestrians. She hates when she has to close the shop and walk to her bus stop alone. That is really creepy, I'll admit. I'm a 25-year-old man who is maybe potentially scared of the dark. So, SCP or not, I would already be freaked out. And she is excited that in just another week, she will be starting a new job that's just around the corner from where she lives. Oh, let's go. She just has to get through these last few nights of being the last one at the store and having to walk home alone. Her more immediate concern now, though, is that her music has stopped. The young okay, why? Okay, that does suck. It is weird, and I would hate that too. But why is it? <gasps> oh my God, my AirPods died! <gasps> you know, it's it, it doesn't warrant that reaction. Woman takes her phone out to check it. Oh, her Dead. phone died. She must have forgotten to plug in the charger. She hates when she does that. Now she'd have to spend the bus ride staring out the window at nothing. What was that? The woman looks up. Okay, her. okay. I, I, again, I would be scared, but I, this girl is freaking out over every little thing that happens. There's a noise. <gasps> oh my god! You don't even know what it is yet! Her phone. Did she see someone? She turns around and sees something on the other side of the street. It's dark, and okay. all she can make out is a big, shadowy figure. This is when you she go. She doesn't <gasps> stare for long, though. That's when you make that noise. Starts to walk again, picking up her pace slightly. She can hear the sound of footsteps and glances over her shoulder. I'm getting the heebie-jeebies. The person across the street is moving too. I'm getting the heebie-jeebies. they seem to be matching her pace, avoiding any streetlights to remain in darkness. Imagine it's just her shadow. I mean, it looks like a shadow. It's pacing her like a shadow would. Imagine like it's just her shadow and she's being ridiculous. She starts to move a little quicker. <laughs> and so do they. <laughs> the young woman grips the pepper spray in her pocket. She Smart. doesn't know what this Let's person go. is doing or what they want, but she's going to be ready for them. She keeps walking and glances over her shoulder again. They're crossing the street towards oh, her now. Oh, damn, that's she ducks not your into shadow. An alley, and as soon as she's around the corner and out of sight, she starts to run. That might be the dumbest thing you could do. Yeah, I'm being chased by a creepy person. Let me walk into this dark alleyway. Here's a genius idea. What are we, what are we talking about? What are, we, what, 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 what are you doing? She sprints through the alley as fast as she can. She looks behind her, frightened of what she might see but no one is there. Maybe she was wrong and they weren't following Look in front her. of you, look in front of you She's though. not about to stop running and find out. She emerges oh. from the alley still running as hard oh, as okay. she can. She, made it. Cool. she reaches her bus stop and finally stops to catch her breath. She checks her watch. The bus should be pulling up right now, but it's nowhere to be seen. Uh, uh, she looks around and what she does see is a shadowy figure coming out okay, of the alley. Okay, And it's dude. coming straight towards her. She backs up into the bus stop and takes the pepper spray out of her pocket, her finger ready on the trigger. The shadowy figure keeps moving towards her when suddenly the dark street is lit up. The woman looks behind her to see her savior. It's the bus. She turns back to see the shadowy figure retreating to the alley as if the light is pushing it away. The woman breathes a sigh of relief and finally lets some of the tension in her body release as the bus comes to a stop in front of her. 
I feel like that person got way too close with the lights on for it to still look like a shadow. You'd think like she would be able to figure out like a little bit of what that person actually looked like. Unless it is the SCP, but I thought the SCP was the bus. Maybe there's a connection. Maybe, I don't know. Let's see. The door swings open and the woman steps inside. I've never been so happy to get on the bus, she says to the driver as she scans her transit card. The driver doesn't respond though. In fact, he doesn't react to her at all. He just keeps staring straight ahead. The woman doesn't push it though. She's just happy to be on the bus, even if it is completely empty. She heads to the back of the bus and takes a seat. Oh, as the yeah. bus pulls away, she can almost swear she could see the shadowy figure standing in the alley, watching her. The bus rumbles along the empty yeah, city like streets this. as the woman looks out the window and takes deep breaths, trying to calm herself after her harrowing ordeal. After a while, she notices that the bus doesn't seem to be stopping as much as it normally does, or at all for that matter. Did they change the route? Or did she get on the wrong bus? They are approaching her stop though, so it doesn't matter, and she reaches up to pull the cord. A bell chimes and the stop requested light illuminates in the front of the bus. But the driver doesn't show any sign oh, of stopping no. or even slowing down. She pulls the cord again, but still no reaction. As she sees her building go by, she calls out, Hey, this is my stop. But the driver doesn't acknowledge her at all. She stands up and walks to the front. Didn't you hear me? This is my stop. Still no reaction from the oh driver. Oh my gosh. Hey, I said. She reaches out and grabs his shoulder, spinning him towards her to find herself staring into the eyes of a fresh corpse. The woman screams and jumps back as the driver slumps forward towards her. She's terrified by the dead body, as well as the fact that the bus will crash. But when she looks at the steering wheel, she sees- I don't like this, 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 I don't like this. I already didn't like it earlier, I like it less now. Every time I watch these SCP videos, I get freaked out, guys. Why do you guys like these so much? It's terrifying. I am gonna go to sleep after recording this video, but now I'm not gonna go to sleep after recording this video because I won't be able to. ...is that it is continuing to move on its own. The woman is in a full-blown panic now. She screams and pounds on the door, but it won't open. The engine roars as the bus starts to pick up speed. She doesn't know what to do and runs to the back where she Bro, she still has her AirPods in. Wait, hold on. Does she? The engine roars Does she as still the bus have starts in? to pick up speed. She still has her AirPods in. Your phone is dead. You're not even listening to anything. <laughs> That's funny. She doesn't know what to do and runs to the back where she tries the rear door, but it doesn't budge either. The bus speeds up even more, whipping around corners and tossing her from side to side. She's thrown to the ground and hits her head. Her <laughs> eyelids it. feel like they weigh a hundred pounds, and she struggles to keep them open. She manages to stay awake, though, and as she looks up in a daze, it's staring Shadow at the Man. ceiling of the bus, she can see a oh, green geez. gas emanating from the vents. It's the last thing she sees before her eyes close for good. The bus finally comes to a stop in a deserted area of the city. The vehicle raises slightly as, one after another, each wheel appears to unfold, what? revealing them to be long, black, spindly legs. The bus stands up on these insectoid appendages as its roof splits into two massive wings. The bus then leaps up into the sky, spreading its wings, and flies what? off into the night. What? Dude, I told you it's the magical school bus going wrong. That thing it literally can fly around the entire world. Bro, it literally just transformed into, like, a mosquito. What the freak, bro? How could this young woman have known that after escaping danger, that her rescuer would be something worse, much worse? Unfortunately for her, she had just willingly stepped onto an instance of SCP-2086, a deadly and terrifying anomaly that hides in plain sight as it stalks and hunts its human prey. SCP-2086 is the designation the SCP Foundation has given to a species that appears to belong to the arthropod phylum, a group that also includes arachnids and crustaceans. These strange creatures differ from most of their lobster and spider brethren in that they make use of an advanced form of camouflage to move among modern society mm. unseen. Adult SCP-2086 instances all resemble some sort of public transportation vehicle. Wow. SCP-2086 instances move about the streets of our cities foraging for food. Hey, and at Phil. first glance, they are virtually indistinguishable from the standard transit vehicles they are mimicking. Close examination of them, though, will reveal that the steel, wood, plastic, and glass they are composed of aren't those materials at all, but a form of specialized chitin, which is the substance that makes up the hard exoskeleton of many insects mm. and other arthropods. And that's not the only aspect of SCP-2086 that isn't actually what it appears to be. The wheels on the bus may go round and round, 
but they also are capable of unraveling into long, thin legs yeah, that create that, a very like imposing that. That image like when SCP-2086 is standing up at its full height. The roof, too, is able to unfurl into a set of giant insectoid wings, and after leaping into the air with its powerful legs, the wings will spread, and the bus can take flight, which appears- There's no way that those wings would actually work. Like, that, they need to be this way, not this way. What is this doing? That's not gonna work. ...appears to be its preferred method of travel when it is not in its camouflaged hunting mode. Its headlights, too, are an entirely biological mechanism, consisting of two large bioluminescent optical organs similar to those possessed by SCP-015-IT and SCP-745. Mm. If you guys want me to check those SCPs out, let me know. There's still so many SCPs that I haven't seen, so if you guys are enjoying these videos and you want me to react to some of the other SCPs, let me know which ones. Dissections of SCP-2086 specimens have shown them to have an entire system of organs, including a heart, brain, and stomach which are found beneath the flooring in the creature's interior chamber. SCP-2086 appendages are not just used for locomotion, though. And they have been observed as being able to use them for fine object manipulation. This fact was learned when they were observed building crude shelters from scrap materials at their nesting grounds. More on these nests and the terrifying events that take place there later. So they build houses for themselves. What? I wonder what type of houses they build. Like, do they build giant garages, you know? Because <laughs> that's where buses go. Or, like, do they actually build an actual home in, like, a nest? When SCP-2086 is not at its nest, it engages in its foraging behavior. Typically, an SCP-2086 instance will fly to the start of a route and begin driving along city streets, picking- Does no one see these giant flying buses? ...up human passengers who willingly enter the creature's inner chamber thinking that it is a standard bus. Along with its exoskeleton closely resembling a real vehicle, SCP-2086 has one more particularly gruesome trick to fool would-be passengers into becoming its prey. A bus that drives itself would lead many to think twice about stepping on board, so SCP-2086 makes use of a decoy driver, which is actually a human corpse encased and preserved in a shellac-like substance. Whoa. Smaller, fibrous appendages protrude from the front seat and into the corpse, which hold it in place and are even capable of manipulating the corpse, giving it the appearance of movement as it drives the bus. Once SCP-2086 has gathered up what it considers to be enough victims, a number that appears to vary from instance to instance, it will release a noxious gas from its interior vents. The gas produces an effect in humans similar to chloroform, and everyone on board will be rendered unconscious. I wonder how it actually consumes them, though, you know? Because they're obviously inside of it right now, but how does it, like, like does it chew it up? Does it, mm, 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 that tastes good, and then swallow it, you know? How does, it, how, does it, how does that part work? The creature, now filled with its prey, does not feed on the humans trapped inside it, though. Instead, it will take them to its nesting grounds, to which is where babies? the real horror begins. Uh, does it have babies that are, like, it's like little cars? Like a smart car? Or like a Prius? Hey, Prius, I'm home! Here's food for the kids! These nesting grounds are most often localized in scrap and junkyards that have fallen into disuse or are completely abandoned. And it is in these nests that the juvenile instances of SCP-2086 are found. While a full-grown instance can weigh as much as 17,000 kilograms, Jeez. which is the approximate curb weight of a normal bus, extensive field research and observation into SCP-2086 has led to the identification of the smaller, juvenile instances, which are much smaller than their adult counterparts, so there weighing are under 200 SCPs. kilograms. But they don't stay this size for long. When an adult SCP-2086 arrives back at the nest with its interior chamber it filled with human prey, it will open its doors and allow the juvenile members to enter inside of it so they can feed and grow. <laughs> Once inside, Ew. a juvenile will remove a passenger from the bus and take them outside. The effects of the chloroform gas will often begin to wear off at this time. Oh, but by so he this wakes point, up to be eaten by a car. Lit. The juvenile instance will then proceed to force the human into a hole located oh, under their hood. This come leads on. to a sort of digestive tract that connects to its inner chamber where the driver's seat is located. Small, hair like appendages will then emerge from the seat and protrude into the prey's body, which hold them in place in the driver's seat and trap them there, while at the same time acting oh as feeding gosh, tubes, man, draining the blood gross. from the now doomed passenger. Who, th who thinks of this stuff? Like, assuming that they're not real, somebody has to think of this stuff. Like, every detail that we are hearing, someone wrote down and was like, yeah, oh, that's good. 
Once the person has been completely drained of blood, the feeding tubes will begin secreting a saline solution as the internal compartment fills with a shellac-like substance. And the effects of both combine to effectively Gosh. embalm and preserve the corpse, which will serve as its own decoy driver once it enters adulthood. And this process happens quite quickly. A newborn SCP-2086 will reach adulthood in just one week, provided that it wow. has had access to nutrients. At which point, it will begin searching for new sources of prey for its own offspring, of which it will likely have plenty. I wonder how they reproduce. Naughty, naughty. Bus on bus action, you know what I'm saying? How does that work? I don't know. 2086 instances become capable of reproduction at eight days, and females are able to produce up to 20 offspring, but their lives are quite short, with their entire life cycle usually lasting just 12 to 15 days. So when they die, do they just like, there's just a bus that is there and it's rusting and crumples up? Prior to feeding and beginning the process of becoming a full-size adult, juveniles will also leave the nest and will covertly move about the city, removing bus stop signposts and relocating them, often creating what? a route that leads back to its own nest. These are the routes that adult instances will then typically follow as they hunt for more prey to bring back to their colony. SCP-2086 instances have been found in metropolitan areas around the world, and news reports are closely monitored by the Foundation for missing persons that had recently used public transport, with Foundation field agents being dispatched to potential high-threat areas to investigate further. Any nests that are discovered have their locations condemned, if they weren't already, and demolished using chemical explosives. Previously, an effort was made to capture and contain live instances of SCP-2086, and currently, the Foundation has five such specimens in its custody, which are stored in a converted airplane hangar. Due to their short lifespans and high rate of reproduction, the amount of live specimens contained at any given time can vary widely, and will often depend on the number of available D-Class personnel who can serve as drivers. Terminated specimens are either destroyed or well, sent to a specialized to cold storage container at a secure <laughs> site for further biological research. SCP-2086 continues to be one of the most dangerous anomalies for common, everyday users of public transportation, and the SCP Foundation has classified it as Keter. Whoa! While Keter is like the highest tier, the, the highest threat tier to humans. Wow, that's crazy. Fied colonies are able to be destroyed with minimal effort once discovered, there is no telling how many nesting grounds still remain in the wild. That is good, though, that they can be destroyed pretty easily because there's a lot of SCPs that are, like, insanely difficult to either capture or destroy. So the next time you're about to board a bus, pay extra careful attention to it. In my opinion, the creepiest SCPs are the ones that take over human bodies and then start transforming them and doing weird things to them. I heard that SCP-4910 is the creepiest out of those types of SCPs. It's called the Grinner. Tell me if it starts to hurt, the dentist says before reaching into your mouth with a pair of orthodontic pliers and starting to pull your front teeth back into place. Ew. Evidently, your Tell screams not enough of an indication of the extreme pain you feel because he doesn't stop pulling. Why is he numb? After numbed? what feels like hours of excruciating oral surgery, you're finally standing outside the dentist's office texting with a friend. Come on, show me. It can't be that bad, reads the message from your friend. Bro, if you get your wisdom teeth taken out, they numb like your entire mouth so that it doesn't hurt. Why was his mouth not numb? That would be like one of the most painful things. It's like, ooh, I don't even want to think about it, but it's like ripping off your, your fingernail, except way worse. Oh, God. You're nervous to send her a picture, though, since you have a small crush on the girl and you don't want her to see you in this state. But after she asks you again, you decide to take a quick selfie oh, and God. send it to her anyway. You snap a photo of your mangled mouth and jaw. The mess of wires had to be hastily applied to move your remaining crooked teeth back into place with blobs of fast hardening epoxy. Okay, with all due respect, this person is definitely from England. Just saying. I love my English people. Just saying. And the result looks like a low budget oh. horror movie prosthetic. You send the message and wait. That is all. You watch the dots appear that indicate she's ready to response. She's gonna and answer. Watch as they disappear. Oh no! Don't do my man like that! Don't be ghosting my man! Come on! You asked for the picture. He sent you the picture, and you ghost him. No, that is for respect. That is sad, bro. That is literally that's sad. You Where's sad the SCP the coming to play? Back into your pocket and begin walking away. Where's the SCP? As you make your way home with your head hung in shame. You keep your mouth shut tight. You don't want any passers-by to see what you've become. You decide to detour through the park to avoid any people as much as possible. And as you walk, 
you decide to stop at a picnic table next to a small pond. I'm not gonna lie, when I got braces, I was that same way. I wouldn't smile. I wouldn't show anyone my teeth. Now, look at him, pearly white. <sighs> you sit at the table and watch the ducks mill about in the water. They have it so lucky, you think. Ducks never have to worry about their teeth getting knocked out <laughs> by a baseball and leaving them looking like a monster. The ducks suddenly all start moving away from your side of the pond, eventually taking flight and leaving completely. Oh my god, are they scared you of them? You get the sense that they're trying to get away from something, and you turn around, but there's nothing no. behind you. No. Oh, it must be me. I hate this think. part. But then you get the sense that there <gasps> is something behind you, and turn again. What is that? Still though, there's nothing. It's oh just you, the picnic table, oh and god. the empty pond. You turn back to watch the still water. Oh my god. But you can't shake the feeling that there's someone behind you. Let's find him. What is that? Again. Hello? Is anyone there? Nope. This is the point. This has happened to me before. I just start running. I don't know where I run to. I just start running. But there's been many times, and I'm sure this happens to everyone, I think, hopefully, where it's nighttime, you just feel like someone's watching you, and you just go run inside. You just go run back to your house because you get scared. It hasn't happened in a while. Last time that's happened to me was probably like four days ago. That's not that like that. It's like, like that not long ago, right? <laughs> right? I'm 25 years old, by the way. You ask, but no one answers. You turn back to the pond and... You scream in fright at the thing standing before you and fall back off the picnic table. You get up out of the dirt and you don't wait to stick around. Oh my god, he looks like it already. Does he not look like the thing that we just saw? Is that foreshadowing? Is this, that's gotta be some foreshadowing. See who or what this thing is. You start to run oh as god. fast oh as my you god. can. Run. You immediately hear it chasing after you. Run and scream, Distinct scream too. Take out your phone and start trying to take pictures of whatever it is that's behind you. Oh, uh, how about call the police? Why would you take a picture? Call the police. You know no one will ever believe you, and you want some evidence of this. this that is a good point. Thing. What is that? You manage to snap off a couple of pictures. Oh my god! Pictures, oh my god! You can hear the creature gaining on you. Run! You scream as your mouth begins to ache. Perhaps running this soon after your surgery is causing your damaged teeth to shift, and the pain is intense. It starts to no, feel like your mouth is full of jagged rocks. Oh my god! But you can feel that it is your teeth pushing out and stabbing into your mouth. Oh my god! Ew! Take one last picture before the creature leaps on you, sending you both to the ground and your phone tumbling into the dirt. Early the next morning, a police perimeter has been set up in the park. The detective arrives and walks past the traumatized looking jogger who must have been the one that discovered the grisly scene. Wait, where did he go? An officer guarding the site lifts up the police tape so the detective can enter the crime scene that surrounds a body lying under a white sheet. Oh, so there, did he die? The detective asks the officer if they've found anything yet. And the officer hands the detective a plastic bag containing a dirty cell phone. Hopefully the SD card didn't break. I know that the phone itself broke, but sometimes the SD card in there, which holds all the memory of the phone, or the SIM card, I should say, and then they can find all the pictures. Huh? Huh? Come on. The detective puts on a latex glove and removes the phone from the bag. The screen is cracked, but it still works. Oh! There's numerous messages on the screen that look like they're Dang. from someone trying to apologize for not responding sooner and asking where the phone's Yikes. owner is and if they're mad at her. The detective oh, opens so she the did phone's respond. camera app and starts looking at the last photos that were taken. Bro, took a, a selfie with it. a series of pictures. They seem to all be selfies that a young man was taking as he ran through the park. It almost appears as though there's a figure behind him, but it's hard to tell. There's a foggy white vignette on the pictures that gets worse the further he looks, slowly closing in until the last photo is nothing but a blurred milky white screen. The detective flips the phone over and looks at the lens, which you can see is completely covered in a hard white substance. The detective places the phone back in the evidence bag and kneels down next to the body. So he did all that, taking all those photos just to not get one single clear one? It's like all the videos that you see of Bigfoot or UFOs. We're in 2024. Anyone's phone camera should be good, like high enough quality to get a good shot of these things. Yet every single UFO video I've ever seen is just insanely blurry. The police officer turns away. He's already seen the victim and doesn't need to again. The detective pulls down the sheet reveal a truly shocking sight. The oh! boy's mouth is a massive teeth, far, far too many teeth. There are teeth growing out of every part of his gums at horrible angles, filling his mouth and jutting out at painfully odd angles. Who could have done this? What could have done this? So do we think it was maybe the doctor that like did the procedure with his teeth? Or was it that S, I mean, that other creature was certainly an SCP, but like why, how did that happen? I don't know, bro, what the heck? The local police department may not have had any idea what the state of this victim meant, but the SCP Foundation did. 
because they had seen the same occurrence dozens of times before. It looks like a hog. In fact, like a war they had hog. seen it happen so many times that they had classified this anomalous entity as SCP-4910, but Ew. it had already earned a much more ominous nickname within the Foundation. It was known as the Grinner. Very little is known about SCP-4910, so and creepy. eyewitness accounts of the creature are all extremely brief. Oh my god, wait, it looks like a human? It has like a human nose, it has hair? Did that thing used to be a human? Oh my... Bro. Due to those who have interacted with it, quickly succumbing to its effects. What is known is that SCP-4910 is a quadruped and appears to be made partially or perhaps entirely out of teeth. Wait, all of those kind of look different. Are there are there a bunch of them or is it just one? And it just like looks different throughout the year. Those who encounter SCP-4910 quickly experience its primary anomalous effect, which is that it causes the extremely rapid overproduction of teeth in its victims' mouths. Yeah. Existing teeth will quickly increase in size, protruding farther out of the gums than should be able, while new teeth will begin to sprout from any available space in the mouth, including Ew. the roof of the mouth and underneath the tongue. These new oh. teeth will completely fill the mouth, which almost immediately inhibits their ability to speak or vocalize at all. The creature will then use this opportunity to attack and incapacitate the victim before starting to feed. Further adding to- oh, come on! I don't need to see that! The mystery of SCP-4910's appearance comes from the effect it has on any nearby recording equipment. Cameras and other devices that come within SCP-4910's proximity will have their critical components compromised by a sudden appearance of a layer of dentin, which is the calcified material that partially makes up teeth. Interestingly, SCP-4910 seems to possess some level of intelligence, as it appears able to differentiate between normal civilians, who it hunts for sustenance, and members of organizations that seek to hunt down and contain or harm it, which it uses for an even more nefarious purpose. While the exact mechanics are still unclear, it seems as though SCP-4910 is able to infect certain anomalous organization members with its ability, causing them to act as a vector for the effect, who then spread it to even more victims. Oh my god! This effect is, of course, of great concern to the Foundation, and containment protocols for infected victims have been hastily put into place. Should a member of staff begin bearing a grin with too many teeth or multiple tooth-filled smiles, they are to be immediately immobilized by any means necessary. Dude, I knew it! He, they're gonna become the SCP as well! That's why there were so many different pictures of them and they look different in every single one is because they're all used to be human and are now that crazy SCP. This is horrible. This is terrifying. I hate it. Preferably with a firearm that allows one to keep an appropriate distance and hopefully prevent any further Sheesh. spread of the effect. And now she's gonna have the teeth. individual is then to be doused in a hydrochloric chemical compound that will reduce the afflicted to a pulp-like substance. Ew! Once this pulp is no longer animate, it's like acid. it can be transferred to the closest incineration site or disposal. Oh my gosh! Should Jeez. a member of personnel have an interaction with SCP-4910 and feel that they were exposed to its anomalous oh, effects, here we go. She's gonna have they may be teeth. saved by taking immediate medical action. Oral surgery to remove the additional teeth has been found to be effective when the procedure is undergone in the first one to two hours following exposure. Okay. The victim will suffer lifelong permanent physical issues from the procedure. Like giant holes in their mouth. Oh my goodness, what happened to her face? The hours have passed. The effect will have spread to the rest of the body, with teeth appearing virtually anywhere. Unfortunately for the victim, should the infection reach this point, pain management has been shown to be ineffective, and there is nothing that can be done to alleviate their suffering, save termination. SCP-4910 remains at large and has been given the Keter classification. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That is gross. That is horrifying. Keter class is like the highest tier of SCP as well. So they've classified this thing as the mo one of the most dangerous SCPs. Holy guacamole. Mobile Task Force Epsilon, codenamed Turfing Black, is the only MTF authorized to respond to sightings and they have been given permission to engage the creature and utilize lethal force if necessary due to the danger this anomaly presents specifically to the SCP Foundation. That was absolutely insane and very, very creepy. If you guys want me to watch any more SCP videos, make sure to leave a like and click right here to watch another awesome one.